I'm Sean Clark. Welcome to another episode of The Collection. Today we're going to feature effects artist, superstar, wizard, just all around interesting dude, Rob Boteen. Now I don't have a lot of Rob Boteen in my collection because his stuff is hard to get. He was kind of a, an odd dude that hoarded his stuff and wanted it to be destroyed, didn't want people to have it. I do know a few private collectors that have a few items. But getting his stuff is pretty tough. Um, that's why you don't see too much of it out there. And a lot of it that's out there is fake. Hate to break it to you. But I came across a uh, from a, a person uh, associated with Mr. Botine had in his collection from his father, Henry Alvarez. And I knew him pretty well through my buddy Darren Roberts and Sandy Clora, who both worked with him over the years and went to a few of his parties at his studio and stuff. Um, I should post those. I have some really cool videos from his uh, Halloween party like in the early 90s. Quality's not so good, but I think people would be interested in seeing it. Actually saw some, oh, the stories I have of the props I saw there that they had in the back. Oh, man, I'm gonna bring a tear to your eye think of what happened to that stuff. Anyway, these are some sketches large sketches that Rob Bottin did. They were design sketches for Twilight Zone the movie. Now mixed in there, there is one total recall sketch for some reason, but these are all hand done by Rob himself. And some of them even have notes like for like sizing and how he's gonna do effects and stuff. It's really cool, but they're huge. So I'm gonna lay them out here on the floor and we're gonna take a look at what I got. So here they are, they're on this like, I don't know what kind of paper you call this. Um, artists know what it's called, I don't know. It's, it looks like brown paper bag paper, but I'm sure it has a more technical term. But to give you an idea of some of the stuff here, this is uh, obviously from Twilight Zone, the movie. This is one of the sketches here. And I, on some of these, they have random notes, they have stains and paint spots and you know these were in his art studio but right here is a phone number it says pete and it has the actual number 213-572-0823 i've been tempted to call that and ask you know if pete is there and you know what should we just do it should i just do it right now should i call pete and find out if you know what i'm gonna do it i've been curious i've seen i'm this is this was not planned. I'm literally just going to do it and and see if this Pete person knows Rob, uh, why his number is on here. Why not? Let's let's do it. Here we go. Let's put on speaker. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. All cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. Announcement for Welcome to Verizon Apparently, Wireless. Apparently this You're number is no longer. Let's make sure I got the right number. Please check the number and dial again. Okay. Well now for... I'm not concerned with um, showing that number on here because that number is no longer in service. Pete, if you're out there, who were you? Why is your number on Rob's artwork? That, that was real. So, this is uh, one of the uh, Twilight Zone characters. You probably recognize it in the film. And just so you know, I have several. I am willing to sell a couple. If there are any hardcore Botine nerds out there that would love to own one, I'm willing to sell a couple. Uh, I gave one that isn't here. I did give one to my good friend Christopher Nelson. Um, but there are two here that someone else was interested in buying, another private collector. And there's definitely two here I am keeping 100%. But there's, this is one of the smaller ones. They're so big, framing them is, take up a lot of space. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's go on to, let's go on to this one here. Oh, there's some nice coffee stains it looks like there, whatever that is. This looks like the same character. Some of these are similar. Yeah, this is the same character. Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's, I don't, who knows, but uh, this one doesn't have a phone number on it, nor does it have any notes. Um, oddly enough, Rob only signed one of these. 
because I do have one of Rob's autographs. I met him one time, Halloween 1992, the same day as the Spinal Tap drummer tryouts, which I spent the night in front of LA Coliseum to be first in line. Check my videos, uh, look under my videos under Spinal Tap drummer tryout. You'll see a Week in Rock MTV report where you'll see me playing drums. I was contestant number one. Uh, also featured in BAM Magazine, posing with Spinal Tap. Just so you know, I didn't win. Nobody won. It was a publicity stunt. There was no real drummer tryout. If you can count to four several times in a row, I mean, that's all we really need. But I got to play the world's biggest drum set in the L.A. Coliseum with Mick Fleetwood there, Mickey Dolan from the Monkees, the two girls from the Go-Go's and the Bangles played together, uh, Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction. Pretty cool. Also, uh, Kevin Murphy from Head First. He tried out, too. True story. He was there. Uh, Kevin, if you've seen it, Head First and Far Side. Played guitar in Far Side. I choked. Not only did I choke, but since I was the first to go, the heads, the, they weren't using headsets, so you were hearing a playback. I think from that point on, people wore headsets, so I kind of got screwed. But again, publicity stunt, I didn't know I really wanted to be in the band. So I went off on a tangent. My bad. So that same night was a Fangoria Weekend of Horrors celebration tribute to Dick Smith. And Rob Bottin showed up there because of Dick Smith. That's the only reason he would show up. He'd never do a convention. Still won't. And he was wearing a tuxedo. I took a picture of my friend Darren with him. Great picture. Perfect focus. And I asked Darren to take a picture for me. And it's slightly out of focus. Darren, come on, bro. Why would you do that to me? I, I took care of you. You screw me. Anyway, his picture's great. They're both looking at the camera smiling. Look at my picture. I look bloated and... Uh, I, like I'd been up for 36 hours, which I had been, and uh, I'm looking at the camera giddy as a, a schoolboy, and Rob Bottin is looking at me going, like, he's literally looking at me, like, with an expression of, like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy, while I'm looking at the camera. I'll put it in here, you can see, you can laugh at me. Anyway, that day, oddly enough, didn't know he was going to be there, I had a Fangoria with me, that had an article on Twilight Zone, the movie. And I got him to autograph that article. So I know what his autograph looks like. Wow, that took a long time to explain. Let's get back to the art. Let's go with this one here. Oh, this one. This one's really cool because it has all this, all these notes. All right, I'm gonna do my best to open this up here. So, as you can see, another Twilight Zone, the movie. But check out all these notes here like shoulder blade, shoulder width, 13 by two or 13 feet, two inches maybe. Um, I don't think that would be right, 13 feet. But he put like square rod, square tube, um, eight inches extend, apply, I don't know, base. He, he, this is obviously the genius of Rob Bottin right here. The only person who understands this is Rob Bottin. Nobody else is going to read this and go, oh yeah, I see what he was doing there. Come on, this is his head at work. And you saw the movie. I mean, that scene made the movie. The that It's a Good Life segment is hands down the coolest segment. Well, okay, Nightmare 20,000 Feet is probably the best segment, but you have to say It's a Good Life had the best effects. I mean, it, the those cartoony, Big Daddy Roth-looking characters he did are awesome. So, got this one. I think this is one of the ones that other guy wanted to buy. So, if you see him, contact me quickly if you see this video. If there's something you want, let's see what we got here. I just want to make sure I save the best one for last. This is, this one's my second favorite. Probably, no, this one's probably my favorite. I'll go last on that one. I think this is probably the other really good one that I'm keeping. Yes, it is. All right, these are the two last I'm going to show. These are, these, are the, these are the grand finale. These are the two that are not for sale. The hardcore, like, collector nerds are probably, like, flipping out watching me handle some of this stuff. But look at how fucked up it is already, so it's not like I'm really going to mess it up. One thing I always thought's kind of funny is when you watch, like, a prop store video and they're wearing the gloves. And it's like everything, it's like... As you can see here, this Baroque portfolio uh, weight 
it's uh you know and they're wearing the white gloves it's like you're wearing the white gloves is supposed to make me think it's like a big deal i'm not buying it you know, it's all show the whole thing is show with those people give me my coas anyway let's get back to this <clears throat> there we go so let's fix this oh when i die don't auction my stuff at prop store any other auction company not them okay i don't want the sean clark collection catalog coming from them you know any any other one julian's heritage i don't care ebay just not them all right okay unless they give my coas then maybe we can get on good terms again i don't think this creature made it in the movie uh this this is just another weird design but another boating weird creature you know it makes you wonder did he create this did it get cut this would be a joe dante question joe do you remember this creature is this one that you said no to did spielberg go over you and say no did spielberg go joe i don't like this creature i don't know but this is definitely one of the designs for twilight zone the movie this one i'm not sure if this is the other one the guy wanted that i know that one with the notes on it was one that that someone else wanted let's get on to another one yeah this is i think that same creature the one that wasn't used should actually go this way huh? that way we reveal the other way yeah okay this is the one that that other piece goes to for some reason i don't know why they did that but they did that Yeah, that other little claw I think goes to that side maybe I don't know I'd have to go through all this stuff and double check but kind of isn't necessary but it is a piece of Rob Bottin art whether tiny or not maybe I'll sell the claw by itself ten bucks for the claw <laughs> uh, anyway I kid 20 all right You guys are like, how do we know this is really Rob Bottin's artwork? Because it is. It is. 100%. Oop. Oop. Oh, this one's pretty dope. This one, this one I really like. This one's a potential keeper. But again, I don't need that many. I mean, they're so big, right? I mean, I want to frame at least one of them. And it's probably going to be the one he signed. But... This one's rad. This is like the Tasmanian Devil one. Ugh. Okay, this one has notes on it too. Oh, oh, you know what? This is the one the claw goes to because you can see where the tape was. It, it's the it's this claw here. Let me find it. So you can see where the tape was right there, and it connected to that claw. See? You get it? So it's even bigger jesus too big but you see it says approximately what's a height 33 and a half inches head to instep toe to forearm and what does that say overall height 51 inches pretty cool man <laughs> Rob Bottin, the mad genius. All right, roll that in there so it don't get lost. All right, we're going to skip over real quick to Total Recall. On the back here, you can see it says Quato Production Drawing on the back. Uh, this one is the most simplest of all the artwork. And the one that I would sell for the cheapest if somebody really wanted something. One thing I will say about it, although it's simple, it looks exactly like Marshall Bell, the actor who played Quato, who's a good friend of mine and client. So you can see, when you see that, you're like, oh, totally Marshall Bell. So he clearly had already been cast at that point. Actually, I should probably just give this to Marshall. And maybe I will. Got a little tear there. 
but you can see the likeness, 100% Marshall Bell. If you're a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, he was the coach in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, amongst the thousand other things he's done. Starship Troopers, X-Files, Millennium, you name it. Guy works a lot. And also featured in the Horse Hall of Grounds <clears throat> Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 episode. I love um, Dark Balls. Most thing he's proud of, I've heard, what he's, what he's mentioned to me. This is the one everybody hopes it's going to be, but this isn't my favorite. My favorite is this one, and this one is the one that Rob signed, but this is my favorite creature in the film, and you guys know what it is. Come on. So, here we go. And there's some little, some little drawings there of, it looks like, it, of it coming out of the hat. I, I think that's what these are supposed to be, how it's going to come out of the hat. And you know what I'm talking about. You better back up. This sucker's big. Look at that. Is that freaking rat or what? That's pretty big. And you can see there's the hat. Very sketch of the hat. But this definitely needs to be framed. Obviously, all this messed up part can easily be trimmed because it's not necessary or it could be matted out if you put a mat on it although it's such a big piece of art that adding a mat's going to make the thing seem so much bigger this thing is badass love this one there we go how cool is this I was getting that kind of expression. This one needs to be framed. And how cool is that? Why did he sign this one? It's kind of an arty signature. Um, but why did he write his name on this one and not the others? I don't know why. But this one's my fave. My fave. It's really tough. But if, if both of them had been signed, I might go bunny over this one I don't know they're both super cool I love this one this definitely has the big daddy Roth vibe which I'm a big fan of of that that artwork that he did his characters rat fink and all that but there we go my Rob Bottin art collection hope you've enjoyed this little look behind the curtain of the zone, the twilight zone, if you will, of the production drawings of one Robert Botin or Botin, as a lot of people mispronounce his pronounce his name, pronounce it. I can't even talk. Mispronounce his name. Anyway, probably the most ingenious uh, effects artist of our time, um, creative. Obviously, Dick Smith is the godfather. Botine is the mad scientist. Rick Baker is the perfectionist. And Stan Winston was pretty damn good. And then, you know, got to have the shout-outs to Savini, Christopher Nelson, Steve Johnson, Tony Gardner, the KMB kids, you know. There's uh, so many talented effects artists out there that have fueled my, my addictions all these years. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like, subscribe, all that crap. You know, get ready for the next one because there's more stuff coming. Hey, everybody. So people have been wondering, Sean, how do we get merch? How do we get t-shirts? How do we get Horrors Hall Ground stuff? How do we get throw rugs? How do we get Thing With Two Heads stuff? How do we get blankets? You want a onesie for a baby, a kazoo. I don't think they do kazoos. Some people might even want Hollywood's Hall of Ground stuff. The collection with Sean Clark, nobody wants to wear that as a shirt. Anything that they'll slap the logos on, you want to be able to get it, right? So if you go to tpublic.com backslash user, backslash malfunction, I think that's it. Yeah, tpublic. <laughs> tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction you can order all kinds of good stuff and people have been asking 
for Mark Beer's latest design. Mark Beer rules, he does a lot of our artwork, pretty much all of our artwork. The skull design. See it here? We're gonna make that available now. Go to the website and order it now on anything you want. Am I moving my arms enough? I hope so. You want shirts, you want hoodies, you want things like that, because you dig it. Tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting the channel. The more we grow this thing, the more content we can bring, the more stuff we can share with you guys. That's what it's all about, man. Being a community, like-minded people, into the same shit, rock and roll.